Esperanto Basics Simplified for English Speakers Fifth Lesson Comparatives Esperanto Basics Simplified for English Speakers Fifth Lesson Making Comparisons As in previous lessons Italics will be used to identify text to which Esperanto phonetics, definitions, and syntax are to be applied. Of course, Esperanto does not require the use of italics. It's just a convention I'm using for these lessons. Making comparisons in Esperanto is much like in English. However, in Esperanto, you don't have to memorize which forms of comparisons are allowed with which things to be compared. While in English you can usually precede a word with more or less to make comparisons, you would probably never say more good or less good as the irregular comparative forms better and worse are expected in those cases. Well, never of course as a fluent English speaker uh, more good and less good are quite commonly used by small children uh, and people, uh, other people learning English. However, you would know that what someone meant if they did use such generally unaccepted phrases. Such as, for example, as I mentioned, in the case of small children learning English. So, just consider... Esperanto to not be so silly about what's accepted and what is not. And you should have no problem. The Esperanto adjective bona means good. The Esperanto phrase pli bona would generally be translated into English as better because of such silliness in the English language but quite literally means more good. If I want to say less good in Esperanto, I would use the opposite of pli, which is mal pli, to form the phrase mal pli bona. Mal pli, of course, is the opposite of pli. Pli means more, mal pli means less. If I wanted to say worse in Esperanto, I would recognize that the English word worse really means more bad, where bad is the opposite of good, so I would not need any new Esperanto words at all. I can simply apply the mal prefix to the adjective bona to make the opposite of good, and then with the word pli, meaning more, we get pli mal bona, which means the same thing as the irregular English word worse. In other words, more bad, or more of the opposite of good. Pli malbona means worse. So you may wonder how we might get best and worst in such a way. You might be surprised to learn that many languages don't have such words and get along fine without them. Esperanto is not such a language. Recall that best really means most good, and worst really means most bad. So to get the equivalent of best and worst, we don't need a word for least, but only a word for most, to make such comparisons. The Esperanto word for most is play. The irregular English word best translates into Esperanto as Play bona, meaning most good. The irregular English word worst translates into Esperanto as play mal bona, meaning most bad. Can you guess what the Esperanto phrases mal play bona and mal play mal bona mean? Mal play is least, bona is good, mal bona is bad. So mal play mal bona would mean least bad and mal play bona 
would be least good. The Esperanto phrase mal play bona means least good. The Esperanto phrase mal play mal bona means least bad. English teaches us that we need a unique word for such things which must be learned before it can be used. Esperanto teaches us that we can use what we know to say things we hadn't planned on being able to say. Instead of having to learn each irregular word independently, in Esperanto you learn how to put together new words out of prefixes, suffixes, and roots without having to change the root in the process to match the particular prefix or suffix. For comparison between two things, the English language relies on the word than to connect the things being compared. I laughed when, on the way to make this lesson, I spotted a sign in a window that said something like, need a loan, then stop in. Of course they meant then and not than, but that's just how confusing the English language is. No pun intended, but in comparison, Esperanto should be like a breath of fresh air. The Esperanto word for then is all, which functions as a preposition. So, the cat is faster than the dog could be pre-translated as la cato bias pli fasta ol la dago, or fully translated as la cato estas pli rapida ol la hundo. And she is smarter than him could be pre-translated as she bias pli smarta ol he. Or fully translated as she estas pli inteligenta ol he. Notice that the accusative form hin is not used because ol is a preposition. As was mentioned in an earlier lesson, you can form the accusative either by putting on the letter no as an accusative ending or by using the preposition na to mark the accusative. So unlike in English, the accusative form of the pronoun is not used in a prepositional phrase um, as controlled by the preposition. The preposition ol specifies the order of comparison. So if we wanted to, we really could say something like ol he, she estas pli inteligenta, which could be translated into English as something like compared to him, she is more intelligent. Notice that this alternative translation of ol as compared to can be applied anywhere than can be used, and then some. For example, li estis la play bella ol chiwi tie could be translated as he or she was the most beautiful compared to everybody there. Don't just aim for translating English into Esperanto. Try to say things using what Esperanto you know that you don't already know how to translate into English. And try to figure out how you could say something in English that would mean about the same thing. You may be surprised to find that even with a little knowledge of Esperanto, you can already form proper Esperanto phrases or sentences that you understand just fine, but don't know how to properly say in English. As in earlier lessons, don't be afraid to practice using whatever words you already know to facilitate practice of what you have learned. For example, the tree is taller than the car could be pre-translated for practice as la trio bias pli tala ol la caro. Or, if you remember that the Esperanto verb for to be is esti, and that the infinitive ending i can be replaced by the present tense ending as, then you could 
use estas instead of the mixed language bias in such a pre-translation. So the tree is taller than the car could be pre-translated as la trio estas pli tala o la caro. Or perhaps as la arbo estas pli tala o la auto. Or maybe as la trio estas pli alta o la caro. The point is, you don't have to know how to fully translate it into la arbo estas pli alta o la auto in order to practice making a complete grammatically correct Esperanto translation of your thoughts into speech. It may not be fully made of Esperanto words, but it can still be grammatically correct in Esperanto and it can still have Esperanto words that you can practice. In fact, the rules of Esperanto specifically allow for using words from another language when they are the best words you can find to express your thoughts. But it is advised that you do so sparingly and with caution, conforming the words to Esperanto orthography and pronunciation in the process, rather than keeping their original spelling and pronunciation as I have been doing in these lessons. That's fine advice for fluent Esperanto speakers with years of experience using the language. But if you are new to Esperanto, do what you must to learn the language enough that it becomes useful to you. The Esperanto language is a key to cultures and customs from all over the planet. Even more so than English, because Speaking your first language, where it is a second language for other people, puts them in an uncomfortable disadvantage. So far, Esperanto is the most politically and culturally neutral language to be spoken by millions of people worldwide. That said, consider all the people who you've heard speak your first language in ways that made you struggle to understand them, and how well you were able to deal with such difficulties thanks to your fluency. Generally speaking, this is rare talent to acquire with a second or third language, but it is rather common with the Esperanto language even when acquired late in life. For example, the word auto is often written, even by fluent Esperanto speakers, as A-U-X-T-O, auto, or A-W-T-O, auto, or A-U apostrophe T-O, auto. I'm reading these letters in English names. Uh, I <laughs> but my point is, there are many ways that you can write the same word instead of the a-wo-to-o spelling that is uh, considered the original Esperanto orthography. It's by no means the only Esperanto orthography out there. So there are many, many ways out there, several others besides these I've mentioned, thanks to the lack of a wo key on the keyboard. In fact, there are six Esperanto letters for which such workarounds are common. The most common workaround is to use the letter X after the letter which otherwise would have been wearing a hat. The point is, you don't have to know all that. If you type or say auto instead of auto, a fluent Esperanto speaker will likely understand you and will probably not even correct you. When one does, learn. It's that simple. In fact, I have my own orthography which avoids the letters cho, jo, ho, jo, sho, and wo completely by using Esper phonetics rather than traditional Esperanto phonetics, and it is rare to even have an Esperanto speaker point out that they've noticed I'm not spelling Esperanto words the way they're used to. They adapt that well. So if you've made it through these five lessons and would like to try out what you've learned, look for Esperanto speakers online in chat groups and things like that. 
You'll even find some places set aside specifically for people who are still learning. After all, none of us are ever really done learning. Now that you know enough to practice making statements of comparison, go out and give it a try. Point at some things and say stuff like, Li bias pli olda ol hi. She estis mal pli rapida ol li. Li shatas shin mal pli ol li shatas min. He estas pli alta ol she. He estis pli mal rapida ol li. Li estas mal pli alta ol la trio. Take turns with a friend, translating each other. Or if nobody will practice with you, practice alone. That way, when you're ready to learn more, you won't have forgotten what you had already learned. Remember this phrase? Mi shatas lerni esperanton. I think that was the phrase I used in a previous lesson. It actually should have been mi shatus. Learn the Esperanto. I would like to learn Esperanto. Mi shatas learn the Esperanto isn't an incorrect phrase. It simply means I like to learn Esperanto or I am liking to learn Esperanto. What I had really meant to say is Mi shatus learn the Esperanto. I would like to learn Esperanto. Or another one. Mi volas lerni Esperanto. I want to learn Esperanto. Now, consider trying this next phrase on the next Esperanto speaker you find. Bonvolu helpi min lerni kiel paroli Esperanto. Bonvolu? Notice the vol back here in volas. Volu is should want. Bon volu is basically with good intentions or should want good. Helpy to help. Notice it's a cognate of the English word help. Min, notice mi is actually a cognate of the English word me. Lerni, notice learn is a cognate of the English word learn. Kiel is a question word. Ki meaning what and kiel meaning how or in which way with what method. Paroli that's a little more complicated for an English speaker um, if you are familiar with other languages that use a similar word like French um, it's not so uh, so difficult, but paroli is to speak. And esperanto is the accusative form of esperanto. So bonvolu helpi min lerni kiel paroli esperanto is please help me to learn how to speak esperanto. And if you don't understand their response, tell them mi ne comprenas. Think of the word comprehend to understand the root of the word comprenas. And remember that the as ending marks it as a present tense verb. Do you understand? Or to ask that question in Esperanto, chuvi comprenas? Se ne? Lernu. This concludes the fifth lesson in this series. Thank you.